and all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me 
Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy. My strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul sings your praise Unending Ten thousand years and then forever The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, 
Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great, how great is our God Age to age He stands And time is in His hand Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great, how great is our God Name above all names Name above all names Worthy of all praise our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. 
and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Francis Julian, for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Francis. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your bungless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. as we do the eulogy by Michelle Bob. Francis was born on the 12th of August, 1972, to the late Betty Dorothy Blackman. He was the fourth child of her five children, Michelle, Andrew, Carl, then Francis, and Duane. 
He spent all of his life in Hamlet's Gap, Hinesbury Road, and he loved to play dominoes and ride his bike everywhere, even to the majority of his workplaces with CRS builders and maintenance, as far as Christ Church sometimes. He loved this so much that one day he was knocked off his bike by a car, and when he realized he was fine, he just got up, back on the bike, and rode home. We are here today to celebrate his life. I pondered on this moment for the past two weeks when Francis was sick and hope it would never get to this point that I would have to deliver these words. As we all hoped he will get better, even as Francis became progressively worse, I still maintained hope that he would fully recover. I started to take weekly photos when Francis jokingly said to me, when this crazy process started, that I needed to record this. And he was never sick before. My photos were to share with him later how sick he was and how hard he fought to get better. And we could laugh at this someday down the road. And he would promise me not to get to this point again. But that was not to be. And I still have my photos, but none of which can be shared. Francis also said that his illness was making him be bold and better able to talk to the ladies. As he lightly flirted with the female doctors and nurses that took care of him, although he was friendly, it was not in his nature to flirt. Francis was of very few words, but he had everyone's back and was willing to stand up if needed to protect his brothers cousins, nieces, and friends. We remember when Chloe was starting secondary school, he told her if anyone troubled her, she must call him. Don't call the police because they wouldn't do anything. Call him. What some of you may not know is that Francis was a very hard worker both at home and at work. And for those who worked with him can tell you, he worked seven days a week. Most weeks we would have to beg him to rest, just as God rested on the seventh day. He was a fighter and as strong as an ox and would not give up on fighting for his life. But God had another job for Francis in heaven. Everyone has been sharing stories of Francis, of his compassion and love, some of the things he did for others, and they called him a good man. One of these quick stories was when he was being taken for his tests. He would say, Michelle, give the nurse $100 and the orderly $100. And I said to him, Francis, we haven't even paid the bill yet. And he told them he would come back when he was better to give them the money. In his first two weeks at the hospital, he gave away all of his toiletries. And I told him, you're still in the hospital and needed those. And he said to me, he will get more. He reminded me recently that he was 51 years old, worked every day, and never asked for anything from anyone. He was a proud man. By now, he would tell me, stop talking so much foolishness. And therefore, he would expect this to be short 
So I'm finally listening, Francis. Francis had no kids, but was a second dad to all of his nieces and nephews. We loved him dearly and still can't believe this moment. He, was a, he will especially be missed by his brothers, Carl, Andrew, and Duane, his cousins, his nieces, his nephews, his friends, and of course myself, as he is a son to me. I would also like to thank my roster of family and friends who were there in rotation for all hospital visits and kept me abreast of everything. I would like to conclude with a poem for my brother by Vincent Chow. Dear loving father, the presence of my brother in my life was a gift to me. Thank you for his life, his heart, and his soul. Thanks for giving me someone who looked out for me and cared for me. Even the rivalry between us was a blessing to me. Thank you for what I learned from my brother's life and love. So now I ask you, Lord, bless my brother with the abundance of your love and mercy. Cover him with your grace. Let him feel your tenderness, touch his soul. Let him know your mercy sets his spirit free. I present to you, O oh Lord, my love for my brother. Open up the heavens to him. Bring him great peace and joy. Thank you for my brother, dear Lord. Thank you for his life and love. All in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We now have a tribute by Charlene Reed, followed by a tribute by Casey Barrow. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. I wrote this poem for my cousin Francis. It's called Our Francis. Our Francis has gone from our sight, but never from our hearts. For him, a new journey starts. Our eyes filled up with tears as we heard the news. We'd prayed so hard that this battle he would not lose for his parting has left such a void and an ache in our hearts as he was one of our family's equal and integral parts. Quietly unassuming, not wanting to be the center of attention, but those friendly jabs and that little smirk surely deserve a mention. The exception was his nieces and nephews for them, he had that golden touch. Ah, yes, these are some of the things we will miss so much. But we have hope that those sleeping will rise and God will open their eyes. No more suffering, no sickness, yes, not even pain. Eternal life, we pray, he will gain. Francis, we will love and miss you forever until that day that we can be together. So rest there one with peace of mind that we will hold each other and someday find a way to fill that parting void with love and laughter and remembered joy. Rest in peace, Francis, and rise to glory.
Good morning. Um, here to deliver a tribute that was written by my brother, Brian Barrow, uh, and he wrote it for Francis. Dear Francis, I never for one moment thought that I would write this letter to you, or any letter to you. You'd probably call me a foolish in your own colorful way. <laughs> but here we are. We have some time before I tell you farewell for the last time. You were my brother. You are my brother. It was you and Casey, Dwayne, and myself following, and we did everything together. From the Gully Hill to the Guava Land, <laughs> to the movies on the beach with uh, Merlin and Michelle, the only ones who would interfere or intervene in our adventures to say whether they were too dangerous or too risky to pursue. <laughs> Francis, you kept us safe at all times, from bullies and dogs and rocks <laughs> and anything else that posed any sort of threat, real or imaginary, that we encountered while we were on our adventures. Uh, you were fierce and fearless. And you were always up front to defend us. Whenever we encountered something that was wrong or unfair. I remember one time falling off a log in Guava Land, and you grabbed me by the shoulder and pulled me up. I don't think no that I would have drowned, but <laughs> you were there. So none of us had to worry about being safe around you, Francis. However, you will never let me forget. And the last time I spoke to you, which was um, Kaduma this year, when they brought it, the matter again, after a few moments, you spoke and said, that's why I should have left you in the gully. <laughs> Characteristic of Francis. Yeah, Francis right. As we got older, and I would have to say this also for myself, we grew apart, but we never forgot this. And we never forgot who we were. We were brothers. And you never ever hesitated to ask for advice or offer me a beer. I know I must bid you farewell, and I hope that you can rest easy, knowing that we will knowing that we will um, We will never forget the times of looking after each other and you looking after all your family, brothers, nephews, nieces, who loved you and who you loved so much. Michelle, Andrew, Carol, Dwayne, Casey, and I will honor that and dedicate ourselves as best we can to looking after each other and those close to us. 
just like you did. Francis, you were the bravest of us. And as such, you have gone ahead before us to prepare a way for us, so to speak. I am sure that you will do what you've always done. Make sure the path is safe for the rest of us to follow. Until then, we will take watch. Francis, I hope that you find rest. And until we meet again, farewell. Thank you. We stand and we sing the hymn, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Francis Julian, and we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the first reading. The first reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. 
a time of war and a time of peace. Thanks be to God. The Psalm number 121. The second scripture reading would be from chapter 14, verses 7 to 13. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to the end, Christ died and lived again. So then he must be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall give me praise, God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Let us therefore no longer pass judgment on one another, but resolve, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of another. Thanks be to God. To him, O oh Jesus, I have promised.
verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I speak to you in the name of the triune God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Death is a part of life. It touches us all. But it is important to note that Jesus tells us in the Beatitudes, my text for this morning's address from the Sermon on the Mount, that those who mourn, not only are they blessed, but that they shall be comforted. God promises comfort for all those whose hearts are sad, for all those who mourn. And he does so through his word as found in Holy Scripture. The psalmist says, Remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress, that your promise, your promise, gives me life. Come to me, all ye who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is in this that we anchor ourselves for life, for crossing Jordan, and for life eternal. And in the more popular psalm, more familiar to many of us, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Our Lord and Savior Jesus knows the importance of receiving comfort in times of trouble and in times of difficulty, times such as these. He feels our sadness very intimately and sincerely. And a few examples from God's Holy Scripture, I believe, will make the point. In Luke's Gospel, we read how he restored or brought to life the only child of a woman whose husband had already died. He did so because, as Luke tells us, he was moved with compassion. Compassion. More than just sympathy, more than just empathy, compassion, a deep understanding of the depth of the loss. He was moved with compassion for her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the coffin and the bears, those who bore the coffin stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up, began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Moved with compassion, always moves us to action. At the death of his friend Lazarus, we see him sharing, sharing the grief of the loss of a loved one. He did not just simply stand from a distance. He himself was a part of the experience of all of those family and friends who were around the burial place. And he felt that loss in such a personal way that it is this passage of scripture that we find the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Weeping and tears are a gift to us from Almighty God. Tears help us to cast away all of what we are experiencing. They help to wash us and cleanse us. So, family and friends, if you need to cry, cry. Because Jesus understands tears. They are a gift to us from him. He wept. So no other words were really necessary. There's, there was no need for explanation. This very short verse encapsulates the essence of a savior who understands the pain of loss. 
And my final example for this morning to make this very simple but profound point that Jesus understands the depth of pain and loss, even as we experience it here at the death of Francis, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus comforted his disciples. He recognized that they were sad because of what he was telling them about what was going to happen to him, how he was going to be crucified, how he was going to die. And in a sense, he stopped short of giving them additional details because he could sense their sadness. All of us, when we come into contact with anyone who has experienced loss of any kind, death, loss of a job, divorce, any kind of loss, a pet, we can sense their sadness. And because Jesus could sense that sadness, he said these words to them. Because I have said these things to you, Jesus said, sorrow has filled your heart. I still have very many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus understands how we feel in times of sadness. He knows how we feel when we are sad. He knows that we will need time to grieve and to get over our loss. But the good news here this morning and always is that he also knows how to comfort us, how to bring peace to our hearts. And he may do so through the words of the hymns or the psalm, the companionship of family and friends such as you have gathered here this morning for Michelle and her siblings and others, and sometimes through the, the kindness of a stranger, someone who will be moved as Jesus was and will act in order to help you through a dis and difficult time. And he is able to comfort us, but more than that, he desires to comfort us. He wants to comfort us. He's able to comfort us not only at times like these, when we are here at funeral services, but throughout our entire lives, when we experience any kind of difficulty, any kind of trouble, any kind of challenge, and sorrow fills our hearts. Today we have gathered to celebrate the life of our brother Francis. A life that was well lived, a life of love, of family, of friendship, of giving, of sharing. A life that we should indeed celebrate and remember. It is my prayer that those who mourn, all of you, family, friends, that you will allow God to comfort you. Hear well the words of the hymns and the psalm that we sang today, for they have within them words of encouragement, words of hope. They speak of God's love and of God's provision for us. They speak of faith and they speak of promise, promise of an eternal life, an abundant life, a quality life, a life where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more illness, no more tears. And I say amen and hallelujah to that. Amen. That is what we desire. That is what we live for. That is what we seek after. In all of our living, all of our striving, we are living so that we can be with our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. I pray too as you have come here this morning that you will receive the gift, the gift of goodwill which surrounds you as demonstrated in the presence of all of those who have come to share your grief and those who are joining us online. And we will thank God for his loving kindness and his mercy as he reaches out to comfort you at this time. We thank God for 
in whatever way that Francis contributed not only to family life, to the gift of friendship, but to colleagues. And we pray that as we heard in all the tributes, Michelle's, the one that was read on behalf of the Barrow family, and the poem that was written, I pray that as you listen to all of those words, as they spoke of the love, that you will determine and decide that your life will continue to reflect all of those wonderful qualities that were spoken of and that Francis' life reflected. I pray that when our time comes, that others will be able to stand and speak of the love that we shared, the friendship that we gave, the protection that was there provided for us, and that we were ready to receive and to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that that will be the testimony of our own lives, that our own eulogies will speak to these things, so that in the end, all of us will be together as we hope and desire. And so, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing indeed that will be. For when we all see Jesus, we are going to sing and shout the victory. On behalf of the entire parish family here at All Souls, I extend sincere condolences to family, friends, and colleagues, all those who mourn. We pray that the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort will comfort you and support you in the days ahead. Know assuredly that you are in our hearts and you are in our prayers. Let us therefore now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page five of your booklet, the creed of our baptism, the creed in which our brother Francis lived and died. I believe in God. He suffered that Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your response, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. We commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith. Live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace of joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We command all people to your unfailing love, 
that in your that in them your will may be fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom lord in your mercy hear our prayer father of all we pray to you for francis and for all those whom we love but see no longer grant to them eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them may he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen, amen. the hymn and can it be during the singing of this hymn a collection will be taken the hymn and can it be
please remain standing for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we have been those who have trusted in us. And you desire the dedication, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend our brother Francis to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Francis, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Francis. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Lord, now let us, thy servant, depart in peace. Lord, now let us, thou, thy servant, depart in peace. According to For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon him. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Francis, into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new. Song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the
Where streams of grace flow deep and wide Where all the love I've ever found Comes like a flood, comes flowing down At the cross
indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees. Ever be on my lips, ever be on 
arms and holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now Let's sing it all, y'all You are a child I can see so clear what it's all about So stay by my side When the sun goes Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. 
He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You shall show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ, Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? You know the secrets of our hearts. In your prayers, hear our prayers, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother Francis Julian, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Francis, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, receive the blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him peace now and forevermore. Amen. As we continue to give God thanks and praise for the life and witness of Francis Julian, we will sing the hymns as they appear in your booklet. Blessed assurance, great is thy 
oh, amazing grace, how great thou art, and great is thy faithfulness.
Karen, come in, Karen. Karen, come in, Karen. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. 
The Lord be with you. Father of all, by whose mercy and grace your saints remain in everlasting light and peace, we remember with thanksgiving those whom we love but see no longer. And we pray that in them your perfect will may be fulfilled through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together let us say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Out of the ashes we rise There's no